When we bought into every direct sales, multi-level marketing supplement, shake, fitness program, and the only thing that's leaner is our bank account. When we've invested in natural paths, energy healers, crystals, and chiropractors, we still feel sick, tired, and overweight. Well, naturally, it means we haven't done something right, right? No pain, no gain. I wake up at 5 a.m. to meditate. I hustle for the muscle. I then drink 11 gallons of water and take a cold shower. Because I am successful and productive, efficient and healthy. There is no denying that this mineral's energy is strong. In fact, it's too strong for some people, so pay attention. A lot of you have been asking me about my gym routine. I love cardio, running, wait, 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 wait. Pilates, because I am better than you. I need to close my rings. <laughs> it does not bring gentle transformation but catapults you into total transformation. Anyway, my actual gym routine is taking selfies and staring at my phone. This type of transformation brings personal power. It brings death and rebirth unapologetically. You guys don't go to the gym? Peasants. Come on, people. I can't relate to any of you. How much do you need? I'm that girl. It's beautiful, abundant, and powerful. Yes, you read the title right. As a creator who dabbles in the wellness niche, I too sometimes wonder if we as a generation and culture over obsess with wellness. If we've been manipulated to fear being unwell, to pour money into sometimes useless and unnecessary remedies that give the illusory benefit of making us feel 0.0001% better of ourselves. This is how you change your life. Work 26 hours a day. Stop breathing, it's a waste of time. Use sunscreen. No sleep, no play. Hustle and bustle every day. Now or never. Do you have what it takes to transform your life? And you must sleep on the floor. The bed is too soft. What is wellness? Wellness promises countless ways of improving the self as portrayed by social media in greater physical flexibility, mental clarity, stronger body, clearer skin, shinier hair. The term wellness was popularized in the late 1950s by Dr. Halbert L. Dunn. Since then, the difference between health and well-being and wellness has been distinctly drawn. Well, Just another day in the circus. While Dunn defines good health as an absence from illness, Wellness is an active, ongoing pursuit that focuses on the improvement of the self as defined by the self. As wellness has grown and morphed into an over $4 trillion industry, this image-conscious version of health has grown into something its originator probably never imagined. According to the Global Wellness Institute, the wellness economy has 11 sectors. Biggest being personal care and beauty at $955 billion and a close second for healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss at $946 billion, followed by physical activity at $738 billion. And then there are some really eye-opening ones, including wellness tourism at $436 billion and wellness real estate at $275 billion. The wellness superiority. Am I better than everyone? As the industry found its golden gate to cash flow by slapping wellness on almost anything and everything. It help you unlock the deepest mysteries of yourself. It brings intuition with ingenuity, increases the size and strength of your aura, and heals inner conflict by integrating all the parts of yourself. Wellness. Wellness has become a label, a lifestyle, an aesthetic. It became a dangerous cultish movement that seduces smart women with pseudoscientific claims, increasing energy, reducing inflammation, lowering the risk of cancer, and healing skin, gut, and fertility problems. If you follow the newest wellness regimen, you feel a sense of superiority that you are on top of the game, that you fit into the aesthetic, that you are an insider. Whereas if you don't, you feel left out, anxious, and maybe unwell. And that being healthy comes at a standard body type, which we all know is not true. At its core, the wellness of a lot of wellness marketing is about weight loss. It's about fitting into a certain aesthetic. It demonizes calorically dense and delicious foods. Am I 
Better than everyone? Spreading a harmful fallacy. Thin is healthy and healthy is thin. Food is either good or bad. When I first began my weight loss journey, I was heavily influenced by the idea that food can be labeled as either good or bad. You know, cut this, cut that out of your diet. And after a long period of living with so many restrictions, I began to realize that it's more so about finding a balance. Eating a piece of cake every once in a while shouldn't make you feel terrible because it's not labeled USDA organic with zero trans fat and has no sugar added. A huge part of finding our own wellness is related to the emotional well-being. And I don't know about you, but eating food that I enjoy definitely gives me the serotonin that makes me feel well. This is a perfect segue to our sponsor today, Yummy Buy, which is an online and in-app snack and grocery store that specializes in grocery, snacks, beauty, and home goods from China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, and other Asian regions. They literally have some of the best Asian food and snacks that are super hard to find in your local grocery stores. And while we're at it, why don't we unbox together what I ordered last night? Love the fast shipping, so convenient. Unboxing time. I am so excited. Ah. Dried lemon slices. Ah. Roasted eel. Ha. Dried lily bulbs, goji berry, lotus seeds white fungus or tremella, and mung beans, a cooling food in the Chinese medical and food sense, more lily bulbs. You guys know that like I put these and the goji berry and the lotus seeds and chia and a bunch of like dates into my chia pudding thing. If you're an OG, you would know. I eat that all the time and it's such a good source of fiber and protein and it tastes good. Some seaweed crisp. Um, oh, dried rose. I'm really looking forward to putting this into my water. Aha, this is really cool. Dried salmon floss. You know, salmon lover, what can I say? And this, I mean, dried salmon skin. These are so good. And if you love salmon, Happy birthday to Yami that just turned nine years old. And to save more money on top of the great deals on their site, be sure to check out the link in the description and use code ZOE10 for $10 off the first order or ZOE99 to get $10 off when you order over 99. Obsession with a cure. Wellness simply means the opposite of being unwell, which leaves a great deal of room for interpretation and obsession. It preys on our vanity, our obsession with youth and our fear of death by packaging certain foods and products as bad and supplements and other merchandise as necessary to be healthy, pretty, and thin, which is my biggest beef with the extreme side of the wellness culture. Just because you don't do hot yoga and Pilates doesn't mean the walk that you took is not proper exercise. Just because you're not drinking Creations Green Smoothie and buy only certified organics from Whole Foods it doesn't mean you're not eating healthy. The culture propelled by the industry has become a trend chasing carousel, which is also a money spending carousel. When the term wellness is brought up, nobody wants to be unwell. Toxic wellness culture perpetuates on the idea that on their own, our bodies cannot self-regulate. That the holy grail of health and wellness is found on the next diet change, the next protocol, the next practitioner, and so on. We obsess over calories and macros, we obsess about portion size and the time of day we eat. Then we obsess over lectins and heavy metals and food sensitivity testing and histamine producing probiotic strains. We obsess over acne, ridges on our fingernails, bumps, and the random sounds our bodies make. Every sensation must mean something. Then, because we are experiencing these very real things, we obsess over the best supplements or practitioners or protocols to heal everything we've or the culture has decided is wrong with us. The core of the toxic side of wellness is that there is something fundamentally wrong with us. There is a lot of pressure on bettering ourselves and not enough conversations about the things that we cannot control, leading to a lot of self-criticism and self-blame. 
toxic wellness culture keeps us constantly chasing our tails for the answers to health and wellness. The cure for everything wrong with us is always the next one. A culture for culture. The wellness industry, not saying all brands do this, loves to capitalize on other exotic racial practices and package it in an aesthetic way to sell it to upper class white women. Movie star turned group founder Gwyneth Paltrow once told a yoga instructor, You have this job because I've done yoga before, suggesting that she, a white woman, was the reason yoga was popularized in wellness circles. While yoga has carried great culture weight for Indians since over 2,000 years ago to bring together the mind and body, it is now commonly seen as a stylish way to get fit and is associated with thin, wealthy white women. Adding up the cost of mats, classes, and gear, yoga has become increasingly exclusive to wider, more affluent spaces, which creates barriers for communities of color to access it and ignores the history behind it. With 77.1% of all US yoga instructors identifying as white, the face of yoga in the US has become upper class white women. Hua sha cupping and traditional Chinese herbs used to be considered weird until associated products got displayed in Sephora. I am not against globalization and the sharing of wellness practices, but when little respect is shown for the origins of these exotic practices that brands are capitalizing on, it makes me question how much brands are actually educated in these practices and how much they care about wellness as opposed to making profits. So at the end of the day, I am not opposed to wellness practices, but do think it is important to critically reflect on how much something is influenced by the profit motivation and to not blindly chase after the next new wellness cure that fixes a problem we didn't know existed. Let me know your thoughts on the wellness culture in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram to join my growth journey. See you next week. Bye. This is the end.